Welcome to Focus Garage. Today, uh, I'm with Dave. He just walked away. Uh, we're gonna work on the motorcycles. Like you can see, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, we're working on the Virago. We're kind of painting it as well at the same time. And then we're gonna work on the R1. What it needs is uh, it needs chain. Uh, the chain was loose on this. Tried to get it up to spec, but it was stretched. So. We're going to go ahead and replace that with a new set of chain and sprocket set. We're not going to do anything crazy like, you know, plus one, minus two, whatever. We're just going to keep it stock. And then we're going to do oil uh, for all these bikes that we have. I have. That's half of the case. We have some mobile one as well. Only the best. And then, yeah, that bike, SV650 needs some oil. Virago needs some oil. R1 needs some oil, SP650 needs uh, coolant flush and also spark plugs and plus a battery because it donated its battery to the Virago at this time. So we're going over here uh, to actually here. What we're using is this tool right here. Actually, DID is from Japan, my, uh, Bre Dave. Oh. Yeah, it says oh. uh, Daido Kogyo LTD Japan. I might have butchered that, but anyway, you use this tool to push the rivet out. Uh, we already did that before starting this. So you, there's this tool right here. It has uh, really good instructions here, the pictures and stuff. Tells you what you need to do and all that. There you go. And to help you with pressing it in and also uh, help you pressing it in and also pressing it out the old pin. So once you do that, you can go ahead and uh, do your own replacement for the chain. You don't have to take it to a bike shop. It's not that hard. Uh, you also, if you don't have it, it's a really good idea to get one. Uh, it's a caliper. That's a good one. I'll show you guys a bad one. This is a really bad caliper. I left it outside, forgot about it. But yeah, so you need a caliper to measure the mushroom, like Dave said, was talking about it earlier. So let's go take a look at this. Uh, oh, also, we're going to put a new tire on it because this tire was old. And besides being old, there's a hole right here. Uh, it's not leaking any air. It's still solid. Uh, I didn't puncture through the carcass, but yeah, we're going to, we need a new tire anyway. Look at this. It's square. So let's go take a look at the chain. This was the chain that was on this bike. It was really dirty. You can probably clean this out, use some vinegar solution to get this rust out, brush it off, and then put some oil on it because what it matters is the oil right here inside that ring. So that's never sees outside because there's like seal here. So it never sees the outside world. So that's good, so you have a good moving chain. This is just uh, like, like outside look, you know, it doesn't make any difference. But this was stretched, so this is a bad chain. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna open the bike up to get that sprocket and uh, remove the rear wheel. So take you guys with us. Dave is uh, working on it, doing a great job. Gotta pull off the uh, shift lever here. <clears throat> There you go. To get access to this guy. Because once you've taken off your two bolts, that should pop. Should pop out. Yep. The cable route in here makes it a little bit tricky. Oh, it's got a little sneaky honey one in there. Oh, uh, there you go. So there is three, huh? Is your uh, drive shaft? Oh shit! Look at that. That's not bad. Oh, dude. Do you think that's thirty-two as well? <laughs> Certainly hope so. <laughs> oh man. Where where where's our new socket? Uh, it's right there. 
Look at how much dirt and grime. Cross the fingers. Oh. It's a little loosey goosey, but hold on. Chill chooch. Uh, let's see. Might have some more stuff. Maybe it's like 29 or 27. <clears throat> let's hope it's 27. I bet you it's a 30. I mean, uh, do you need, really need to torque that, you know? I mean, it'll tighten itself. I think right. it's uh, self-tightening. No, we'll go get a tool for it. All right, we'll, we'll continue working on it and give you guys a little update. And I also want to tell you guys, this is Plasti Dip. I wanted to try this color on my uh, different project car, but I wanted to try it out before I put it on that car. And I picked the Virago because it was an old bike, didn't really care for it, and paint wasn't that great. And these were mismatched anyway. So, and it looks pretty good actually. Like it's a it's a chocolate ore with gold flake in it. So it almost looks like the paint that I use on the Audi's intake valve. So valve cover intake, not intake, but just valve. So we have another one there. So, and Virago is going single carb, no dual carb, because it's just it's pain in the butt to get that going. So yeah. So after removing it, uh, this is the nut. This is the nut right here that you need to remove. Make sure that you see that dimple right there. When you install it back in, you gotta you gotta put that dimple where it goes so the nut doesn't back off. And it's only take uh, 61 pounds of torque, foot pounds torque. Yeah. That's the spec for it, and you're good. You can uh, put the, that's the new one. We're going with the DID, uh, which is a decent company. We're using their chain and sprocket set. So, yeah, we're gonna put uh, the cover back on, and then we're gonna move on to the rear, replace that. That looks so much more easier, but we need to get the wheel off. That's okay, because we're gonna do that anyway. And then, we'll do the oil change. So what we have done is we fed the chain into the front sprocket and then remove this, which is a, a 32 millimeter nut to remove the wheel and slide off the brake pad. This is a perfect time to check your brake pads material and see, and it looks like this is plenty. And then uh, we removed the old one and installed the new one. So this is the new one right here. The spec I have seen, 72 pounds of torque. But a lot of people torque it to 30 because they say when you do it to 70, it strips a bolt. And um, I'm just gonna go with the online this time instead of trusting the OEM spec because I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna tor torque it to 72 and strip the bolt and that's pain in the butt to replace that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that way. So what's next? We're gonna do the oil change and then we're gonna take this wheel with the new tire to the shop and get it mounted and then we'll be done with the R1. Oh no, we're not. Ha <laughs> ha, ha ha, ha ha. If you own a bike that has a booty exhaust, you will <laughs> love roasted thighs. Yeah, and it's toasty. I was complaining to these guys, and I really wanted to booty exhaust. And I was like, dude, this bike is hot, and they're like, stop complaining. I just that's why you and I let Dave ride this bike, and he's like, yeah, man, I can't feel my leg, it's just so hot. And then so, you think to go faster because you think, oh, you'll go faster, the wind should take the heat away. But as you go faster, you pump more heat into the exhaust, and it gets hotter. There's no relief, it only gets hotter. <laughs> yeah, See, it's just it, and like if. To be honest, this bike is not meant to go below 45 miles an hour. It just like, it gets really hot. You get hot air coming from the fins over there, the, the, the radiator, and then also your exhaust. It's just, you gotta go faster than 45. And if you go faster, like Dave was saying, the exhaust gets hot. So we, I got this, I'm going to wrap the exhaust with this tape 
as best as I can without making it look like a jigsaw on a stretched uh, arm, but we're gonna do our best to wrap it to at least minimize the heat coming from the exhaust because it's, that's unbearable. And I want to ride this bike like three, four hours. I know that's not going to happen, but you're going to have to try. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's do the oil change first because that's, that's number one priority, like always. And then we're going to do the um, exhaust. I got the heat wrap on the bike. Uh, I was actually running it. Usually you can't really touch it, but now you can, so that's this is gonna be really good. There are a couple of tricks how to do it. Uh, my kit came with these metal zip ties, but uh, the exhaust two brothers have a metal hose clamp over here for this heat shield. So this is also securing it here. So I got it on this side and also on the other side. Uh, I need to clean these out, clean those out, but. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. It works pretty good. Um, I got the axle nut on as well. So this is all good. I got my chain all ready to go. Did the oil change. Um, yeah, this bike is ready to actually go. So there's nothing left to do on this than just ride it. I looked. Um, oh, yeah. Also, when you're changing the oil filter on an R1, it's in a really bad spot. So even though I cleaned it out, it's, uh, it's still smoked. So I must have not cleaned it very well. So that's done. That's done. Uh, just need to, um, just need to wire up the charger. So the battery is always charging. Also got all the tires to 45 PSI, just what it's recommended. So I'm all done. I just need to clean it up. There's so much stuff around here. Um, so yeah, we're done with the R1. It's tucked away to its uh, sleeping location when it's not been written. And so summing it up, what we have done to this R1 is the exhaust wrap, new tire, new chain, oil change, and that's it. It's ready, the service is done. Probably in the near future, we'll be replacing the brake fluid that looks kind of orange, the front and the rear one too. So yeah, we're done with servicing the R1. It's actually ready for the summer, for the season uh, to be written with no you know problem whatsoever. Can't wait to put more miles on it and you know take away some miles from my other motorcycles that I have. But anyway, I'm going to end this video right here. Uh, I want to thank Dave for helping me with the chain. It was such a, a weird job, not a big job, but a job that I never done before. And it, you know, it's always interesting to start a job that you never done. But anyway, I want to thank him for helping me out and uh, guiding me through this. And if you guys have any questions about the R1 or any other project cars that we have in this channel, please, uh, you can leave a comment or reach us on Facebook or Instagram. Mike and I are very, uh, responsive to the messages that we receive try to help you guys out as soon as possible so yeah and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do so this let us know that you know there are people out there watching our videos and shenanigans and we continue pu putting out more content out there so for you guys to enjoy and if, again if you guys have any questions you can also comment on our videos please like and share our videos too thanks for watching kudos to all